Okay, hello YouTube. Today we're going to be going over the dragon variation. So after uh, White plays the open Sicilian and we get into this mainline position of the Yugoslav dragon, what we're going to be focusing on today is what do we do against this move uh, nine castles queenside. Now in the past we used to think that there were two lines here. We used to think that uh, there was both d5 and knight takes d4. Now we really only think there's one line. Uh, and the main reason is because against uh, after knight d4, bishop d4, bishop e6, white simply plays king b1, and it turns out that we're just down a tempo in this line. Uh, we can't play the immediate queen a5 because of the move knight to d5, which would win the pawn on e7. This means that black will have to two-step his queen. Black is going to have to play queen c7, and then brick fc8, and then eventually queen a5. And as it turns out that when you lose a whole tempo in a position where both sides are playing for mate, uh, you end up just getting mated one move before your opponent does, and you lose. So... Uh, <laughs> Engines have kind of confirmed this. Uh, so we don't play knight d4 anymore. That doesn't mean the lines aren't still relevant to understand, because if you don't lose that tempo, for example, if instead of castle's queenside they were to play g4, uh, then you would reply with bishop e6, and there is the possibility to directly transpose with castle's queenside knight d4, bishop d4, queen a5, and... Again, at that point, all those ideas are still uh, very relevant in the position. Uh, but here, uh, every top player after Castle's Queenside is going to be playing this move, uh, pawn to uh, d5. It's pretty much the only move that gets played here by top-level players when they're playing this position with black, because they understand the theory and they understand they can't afford to be down that move. Uh, so when you see Magnus play this with the black pieces or Nakamura, that's the reason you're only seeing d5 um, almost exclusively these days against uh, Castle's Queenside. So at this point, there are a ton of moves here that white can play reams and reams of theory. Uh, white can play knight c6 followed by bishop h6. White can play knight c6 followed by e5 with or without the move bishop h6. Uh, they can play king b1, they can play queen e1, or they can play one of the many main lines beginning with the move uh, e takes d5. So one of the main lines that we're going to go over today beginning with ed, ed5 is where white just decides he just wants to take all the pawns. So he can play e takes d5, uh, knight takes d5, knight c6, bc6. Now at this point, uh, the main line in this position, the line you have to be the most familiar with and put the majority of your uh, theoretical work into, is going to be this move bishop to d4, and this is going to get its own video. Like bishop d4, uh, e5, uh, bishop c5 begins sort of the super main line of the position. Uh, the move that we're going to be going over today is what do you do if they just decide to take all the pawns? So what do you do if they take on d5, c takes d5, and now black has a good center, so if you've gotten this far as white, you really do need to take that pawn. Otherwise, black's good center should just yield him some sort of advantage. So white really does need to play queen d5 here, and black's next move needs to be queen c7. So the whole point of queen c7 is black needs to sidestep the exchange of queens. Otherwise, he's just down a pawn and he doesn't really have any comp compensation. And he needs to take advantage of the fact that he has several open files against the white king. So this is uh, kind of the initiative that he's playing for. So the first initial thing that you might notice about the position is it at least appears uh, that the rook on a8 is hanging. So for the most part, it's just been considered for a long time that this rook is kind of uncapturable. Uh, Black does have uh, some sort of slight advantage in, in all of these positions. So, for example, if queen takes a8, uh, the move here is bishop f5. That threatens mate on c2, and it threatens the queen, so the queen will have to sacrifice itself for two rooks. So, on the surface, it doesn't look too bad for white. You're thinking, well, two rooks, that's ten points, the queen is nine points, you know, what could be so terrible? Well, the problem is, is that black has the initiative. So, we're threatening mate on c2. That needs to be defended against. And as it turns out, there's not a great way to defend against that mate. There's two ways that lose on the spot. Like, the two most natural-looking moves lose on the spot. Uh, c3 loses pretty much instantly, just bishop c3, and if bc3, uh, we have queen c3 mate. So they would have to play bishop d3, and then bishop d4 is just kind of a decisive attack for black. White's king is out in the open, and that's never going to get fixed. Uh, he has to play king d2, and this position is just kind of silly to even look at. So... Uh, the other move is bishop d3, and people think they can get away with this because there is this mate threat on the d8 square. Black's back rank is kind of weak. So at first glance, it looks like you can meet a move like queen e5 with a move like bishop f5, and black has nothing because there's this mate threat on the d8 square. Well, it turns out black just does everything with check, and uh, he wins a whole piece. Uh, queen to e3 check, uh, king b1, and then queen b6 covers the mate threat on d8 while simultaneously threatening a mate of your own on b2. So after the mate threat on b2 gets blocked, which is forced, uh, we simply take the bishop on f5, which is hanging, and then we have a whole extra piece in this position, and we're still attacking on the dark squares. Uh, it's just absolutely decisive advantage white. I mean, decisive advantage black. The position is absolutely, it's close to resignable for white. 
Uh, so the only move that actually works here is rook to d2, and even this position is just considered slight edge black. Uh, black should just play h5 to hold the position uh, for the bishop, and then after, say, bishop e2, he should just play king g8, and now the queen is free to roam and create attacking chances and make threats and make white move his queenside pawns, and this position is just uh, slight edge black. It's nearly impossible for white to improve his position without hanging pawns or making his king even more weak. Uh, he can't move this rook away, for example, without hanging the h2 pawn. So it's just, it's very difficult for white to ever unwind. Uh, so this is just uh, major, uh, somewhere between slight to major advantage uh, black. So for the most part, taking all the pawns is not considered the way to go here. So people that actually try to do this pretty much universally play queen c5. And according to the theory right now, uh, sort of the most that white can hope for in this position is something maybe resembling equality. Uh, so if you're playing this position as white, maybe you're shooting for equality, uh, which isn't something that really endorses a position like this. So, I mean, if, if you're playing the white pieces, I don't recommend taking all the pawns uh, after d5. It doesn't seem like a line that works. Uh, but black does need to find the critical move here, and that move is queen b7. It's actually really important that when you sidestep this queen exchange, that you sidestep it with a move that leaves the b8 square open for the rook and leaves the c6 square open for the queen. And this is what's yielding black, his slight edge in pretty much all lines. Uh, you know, maybe white's eking out equality in some of these lines, but it's it, it seems like when you look at this stuff with the engines, it's all coming out to slight edge uh, black. So the whole point of queen b7 is really the only good move here is this move queen a3. Now it is possible for people to try other moves, and I've actually had a couple of games where people have personally tried other moves against me, uh, and they all seem to fail. Uh, I had one game actually go bishop to d4, and I actually found uh, all the right moves here, and that's why I'm showing my game and not somebody else's game, because I actually found all the right moves. Uh, so I played the move bishop f5, uh, and uh, here the best move is apparently this move uh, bishop d3, which my opponent did not find, but uh, bishop d3 still apparently leads to uh, somewhere between slight to major advantage black after rick fc8, queen back, bishop d4 takes, and then this Great looking move, rook c3, bc3 check, uh, rook d2 is forced, and then takes is somewhere between slight to major advantage black. Uh, black is obviously going to get his exchange back, he's going to keep attacking, the white king is wide open, it's not clear how we defend long term. Uh, so that's not what my opponent found. My opponent in the game that I played found uh, this move instead of bishop d3, found the move uh, queen b5, uh, and then I followed up again uh, extremely correctly. I played this move queen c7, uh, threatening mate on c2. Uh, there's only so many ways to defend against that. So queen c5 was played, queen c5 takes, uh, rook fc8, b4, a5, uh, g4, I just let them take that bishop uh, because I followed through. Again, just followed through with complete accuracy. They took on h7, and then I played bishop c3, and they resigned. And that was uh, Simo versus Plunkett played in Stillwater in 2007. So yay, one of my own games gets included in the theory. Okay, so... <laughs> So going back, uh, bishop d4 is kind of a lemon, and, and it's actually kind of a lemon, uh, it can be a lemon later, uh, depending on what they try. Uh, but the main move here has got to be this move, uh, uh, queen a3. Again, another maybe attempt is queen b5, and again, it's very similar, just takes, takes, rook b8, a4, a6, advantage black. So again, really anything other than queen a3 is just not very good. So now here it's somewhat critical that you play the theory absolutely correctly. Uh, you need to play this move uh, bishop f5 here uh, and not the move rook to b8. The whole point is if you play rook b8 now this idea of bishop d4 actually works. Uh, if bishop d4 now when you take and they take back they've managed to defend their queen side without ever needing to move a pawn and this position is actually just going to be advantage white because you you didn't create enough weaknesses to justify the fact that you're down a pawn. So you're not going to be able to continue attacking in a way that improves your position enough to compensate for the pawn that you're down. Uh, so it's really critical that you do find this move bishop f5 so that they have to play bishop d3 because you were threatening rook to c8, building up that pressure on c2. And then once they play bishop to d3, now you can play rook a b8, which forces a pawn move. Once they move that pawn, now you have this move queen to c6. And this should be kind of, we'll just say an unclear position, but 
it seems like uh, the computer likes it. It thinks that black is at least equal, uh, maybe a little bit better. So I'm just going to call all these positions just slight edge black, um, and in a lot of cases somewhere between slight edge to major advantage black. Now the whole point of queen c6 is we're trying to meet bishop to f5 uh, with queen to c3. Now other moves are actually possible instead of bishop f5, although pretty much every top player that has gotten into the position with white somehow have universally played bishop to f5, even though it's unclear that it's even the best move. Um, I had somebody try queen c5 against me. Uh, this was actually played uh, by Chris Kalina. Um, I played this against him at the chess castle uh, with black, and I continued again. I found the best move. Uh, I played queen to f6, which is the best move, and it's actually really hard to meet this move queen f6, although I will give Kalina credit. Queen c5 appears to be one of the better moves in the position, uh, possibly better than bishop f5. Uh, but he didn't know how to meet uh, the threats along the dark squares, and he came up with uh, what, what turned out to be a, a game-losing blunder. He played bishop d4. I took, he took, I took. He was thinking he had bishop f5 where the bishop on d4 is hanging, but I simply played bishop e3 with check, and he resigns because after the king moves, I played g takes f5, and I'm up a whole piece. Uh, so that's really how you should make queen c5 is just uh, queen, queen f6, and it seems like Black is doing pretty good here, um, you know, maybe still just slight edge black. Uh, so uh, after queen c6, almost everybody plays bishop f5, and then the move here is queen c3. That's the whole point. We're meeting bishop f5 with queen c3. That puts pressure on f5 and e3 and basically forces the move bishop t3 to come back. And now black just needs to play both his rooks to the open files. He needs to play rook to c8 and put pressure on c2 and play rook to d8 and threaten to play rook takes d3, which will break through with the attack. And he can play this in any order. It doesn't seem to matter. Uh, we can play rook d8 first or rook c8 first. Uh, the move order seems pretty much irrelevant. And um, according to the engine anyway, white's defense is extremely tricky. You know, for example, like you can't play rook d2 because queen a1 is mate. You can't play king b1 because queen a1 is mate. Uh, you can't play bishop d2 because queen a1 is mate. So it's incredibly tricky to defend against black's very simple strategy, and, and the computer actually comes up with, with kind of a weird defense that still ends in uh, major advantage black. So rook c8, the computer wants to play queen a4 because it wants to play b4 and defend the c2 square with the queen. So then you would play rook d8, and then you would have b4 defending that c2 square, and then rook d3 is just decisive advantage black. Uh, the whole point is, after rook d3, this is major advantage. Uh, queen a1, uh, king d2, queen takes on uh, h1, queen a7, queen g2 check, and all of white's pawns are disconnected and hanging, and the king is still incredibly unsafe on d2. This position is just decisive advantage uh, black. So uh, that's basically how you need to um, meet this stuff uh, when white decides that he wants to just go ahead and take all the pawns. Uh, the main move to remember is just they take all the pawns, you play queen c7, and uh, for the most part, theory is considering these lines at best maybe equal uh, for white, uh, but possibly even just a slight edge to major advantage black. So anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned something new about chess, and I hope you can use some of these ideas in your own games. Uh, thank you very much for watching.